Ah, scary stories. You love them. You wouldn't be here right now watching this channel and this video if you didn't love some scary stories. But why do we love them? What is the reason that we crave this creepiness? My personal theory, my own philosophy on it is that the creepy, morose, morbid aspect of these stories remind us that death is right around the corner, that we can reach out and almost touch and taste death, move beyond this life and into that realm that's so dark and mysterious. And doing that is what gives us a reminder of our own existence, our own mortality, the reason we survive each day. And that's also why I love to tell these stories. They reach deep inside of me and they pull up those feelings over and over again, something I never get tired of. So, with that said, and everything evil in me, I declare this Osoroshi I'm gonna start tonight with a personal horror story, one that I actually encountered myself from a friend. Now, it wasn't something that I personally experienced, but it was something that was told to me and was so gratifying for the fear aspect that I felt I had to tell this one again. Those of you who love a good scare, get ready. Those of you who are a bit faint of heart, maybe this isn't the story for you. This story is called The Baby Room, or the Akachan no Heya in Japanese. It seems innocent enough, right? A baby room? My friend was buying a house and it was a really old apartment that he was going to refurbish. Now, really old apartments in Japan are full of tatami mat and choji doors that are made of paper and they need a lot of work. If you're going to live in them, you got to scrape a lot of stuff out of there. You got to get rid of all that tatami mat because it just builds up dust and cat hair and any other animal that's ever run through that place is going to come breathing back into your asthma and kill all kinds of sinuses and allergies that you have. So he gets this place and begins work on it and actually starts to move in because the first place they finish off is the bedroom so they at least have a place they can bed down at night and his wife says in the middle of the night the first night they were there one of the first things that she could hear was what she thought was creaking creaking of like doors or maybe floorboards moving around because old houses in Japan are strictly made of wood as you might know they're made of special actual wood bondings that will let them survive earthquakes and stuff like that so it's pretty common to hear creaks in the wood here you know there's a lot of seismic activity not a big deal but she listened closer and she realized that creaking is more than just wood creaking it actually almost sounds like screeching or even ah that's right she remembered it was like crying like a child's crying. And she could start to hear it better and better and eventually she thought, yeah, that's definitely a child crying. That's not the creaking of wood. No, it's actually whimpering and getting stronger. Well, who do we live next to? They didn't live next to anybody but some old people and they definitely did not have a baby living there. They didn't even have a grandchild that came and visited. And that was their only neighbor because they were out in the middle of the forest. A pretty rural place, if you would. And they didn't know exactly what could be making that sound. But, you know, whatever. The cries in the middle of the night could even be that of an animal. Sometimes they can almost mimic babies, so not a big deal. Nothing to get worked up over. The next night, the husband said he heard it too, but he didn't just hear the crying. He said he could hear pitter-patter. Not the pitter-patter of little feet running around, but more of hi-hi. Hi-hi is crawling in Japanese. And it could be heard underneath his bed. That's strange. He could also smell something like iron 
like kind of like salty iron oh no no wait blood that's what it is blood he said it was definitely blood but like not fresh blood kind of older blood which also didn't make any sense mixed with that of the cries of a baby ah i know what it was said the wife after that it was probably an animal being killed or an animal feasting on something that they found in the woods predator captures prey happens all the time in rural japan you'd be surprised how rural and how forest covered the very deep parts of Japan are. That could easily be something out there. There's even grizzly bears up in Hokkaido. That's got to be what it is they both thought. It's definitely got to be some kind of animal that runs around there. Let's go ahead and check with the ward office and just see what kind of stuff is around our area. They check it out. No, there hasn't been any kind of sightings of wolf packs or bears or anything out by your area at the most. Maybe you have some wild birds, but nothing that could make a crying sound or that would be killing something in cold blood or carnivorous. Hmm. That's weird. They went again to bed that night and again they were haunted by something. And this time they knew it was a presence beyond just that of the scurrying animals outside. For this time, the woman felt something crawling on her bed. It was crawling on the bed and all the way up her chest and up to her neck to the point that she started to feel very light and small amount of breathing on her face. Now this breathing wasn't the type of breathing that you would expect from a person leaning over you like that. It was actually more of a more innocent breath, one that wasn't so deep but more short and quick and perhaps not as old if that can be described. She refused to open her eyes. She begged not to open her eyes. She did everything she could not to open her eyes. And then she heard the coo of a baby once more. The cry in the middle of the night of a baby once more. And that time, the cry was right next to her face. She opened her eyes for just a split second to see what she could see. What is this presence on top of her? She was met by the gaze of a chubby, mochi white baby face. The head was floating by itself, not connected to a body, and just saying mama over and over again, mama, mama, and then a little bit of crying, and then as the face began to turn into this morphing, crying, withering face, it melted down and disappeared into nothing. Horrified, she screamed as loud as she could, the husband woke up, and then the house erupted with babies crying. Both of them ran out of the house, and that night they had to go stay at their parents' house. They couldn't take it anymore. The next day they went back to the ward office. We need to go through your archives and find out what the hell used to go on in this house. They checked it out before, and one thing they made sure to investigate was that it was not a suicide house. Very cheap houses usually have a suicide that occurred in it, and in Japan, that kind of is considered a curse to the house, and it'll break the price down very, very low, and this is what this house had, it was a very, very low price, and they thought, we asked the realtor, and in Japan, by law, the realtor does have to tell you if someone committed suicide in there. No one had ever committed suicide in there. The ward office assured them, but they did have archives on an older medical business it seemed there used to be in there. Looking through the archives, they discovered the room where they had once had their balcony turned into a closet had actually been an abortion room. Later, when they went back to the house, they couldn't find that on the floor plan of the blueprints of their house, so they began pushing open all the closet doors they hadn't looked through yet. Behind one closet door, they found a fake wall that they could push out. It wasn't just an abortion clinic, it was an underground, uncertified, unlicensed abortion clinic from ages ago when medical practices covered anything that was a needle puncturing skin. Unfortunately, this one was never registered, and quite a few women died due to the fact that all the different surgeons were unqualified, unlicensed surgeons. It was a bit of a chop shop, if you will, a sawbones. Who knows how many children died there or how many innocent women but now the souls of those kids haunt that house. What did my friends do? They actually had the room filled completely with concrete. Now mind you, this was a very small closet room. They still had a lot of their house left, but after they had the entire room filled with concrete, they were haunted no more. Less to say it wasn't easy to sell their house after that.
Speaking of babies, one more thing I just want to cover real quick is a Japanese demon that not a lot of people have ever talked about. And when we talk about Japanese demons or yokai or yurei or obake here in Japan, everyone lists the real quick ones that they know. Kuchisake, Ono, the split mouth woman, Rokuroku Kubi, the long neck woman, all different types of ones like that. Everybody knows those who've read any little bit or, you know, the Hyakumonogatari about Japan. But do you know Ubume? Ubume was a woman who died while she was pregnant. When Ubume died, her baby died with her, and she never got to hold the baby because she died before it was born. After which, she dug herself out of her grave and began to rip babies out of the wombs of women in order to be able to hold that baby once more, to get the chance to cuddle her own child. During the Edo period, it was actually a ritual that if a woman died while a baby was still inside of her womb, they would cut her stomach open, pull the baby out, and put it in her arms so she could hold it, so that she too would not return as an ubume. What I have next is another little short story that may not seem too creepy to some of you, but for me, I felt like this was kind of an out of the ordinary story that was beyond just someone making up a supernatural creep scare, but someone genuinely asking for help. It comes from uh, the same website that I had talked about before where people write in about supernatural experiences or scary stories that they've had happen to them. And for the most part, most of them sound ridiculous. You know, they're made up, they're about as real as any creepypasta that you would read on the creepy Wicca. But this one was a little bit creepy and was written in a way where it seemed like the writer was quite genuine. And it talks about a woman who has been watching TV and every time she would turn on the TV, uh, a mysterious woman in green would show up on her TV screen. And she never knew why this was happening and thought perhaps it was some kind of electronical scare or some kind of mess up with the wiring. and. You know, she called her local TV company, her electrician and stuff like that, and they all never actually saw this person appear on her TV, and she said it started to only happen when she was by herself. And uh, I think what is best for me to do in this situation is just kind of read her post verbatim and let you guys think about what this could possibly be. It's called, What Appears on the TV. That's how it's been translated from Japanese. I translated the whole thing, so I'll just read it out from verbatim translation. This is not so scary, but it's happening for real, and I want to post it here. About a month ago, when I turned on the TV, suddenly, in the middle of the screen, and against a black background, a woman appeared, looking limp and wearing green clothes from top to bottom. I couldn't tell exactly, but it was something like long sleeve top and green trousers. The woman appeared for only a second, and then it turned back to a normal TV screen. When I turned on the TV, the woman would appear about three out of ten times. What is this? I thought about it, and I called an electrician to come check it out, but when he came, somehow the woman would never show up. I called a cable man and a TV man too, but also she would never show up when they were there, no matter how many times we tried. All these people got very annoyed and frustrated and left. It seems she would only appear when I am alone. As you can expect, I was scared, and so I tried things like keeping my eyes shut or turning on the TV, or opening them after a few seconds, or going out of the room as soon as I turn on the TV and go to the toilet and come back and see if she's there. But the woman was always there. And about one second later, as if she had made sure I saw her, she would disappear, and it would return back to the normal TV screen. From one month ago until now, the probability of the woman appearing has been getting higher and higher, and now she appears 9 out of 10 times. Now I hardly watch TV at night. I would appreciate if someone could suggest a scientific explanation for this. Creepy story for me. You guys, any theories on this one?
This next tale is a story posted to a supernatural website uh, for junior high school students. And it's just called 13 Bodies. It's a pretty creepy little story that has been told to be somewhat true, but has some kind of strange origins and some stuff that doesn't really translate so well after I've translated it. So I'll explain a little bit here and there as I read it. It's called 13 Bodies. I heard this scary story from an old PE teacher at my primary school. It happened in a small village in Gifu. Because of its small population, the houses were few and far between. There was at least 100 meters between each house. This is a lot in Japan, a lot of space between houses in Japan. Not so much in America, but in Japan, yes. A traveler came to this village on a snowy day and went into a seemingly empty house due to the fact that houses in this place were very welcoming and would accept travelers should they be weary on their travel. He tried to get some rest there, but all he found was an old woman inside. The old woman led him up to the second floor where he assumed he would rest. But when he got there, she had disappeared. There was nothing he could do but go back downstairs. He felt a bit spooked and tried to leave the house when suddenly he saw the same old woman standing in the middle of the tatami room. Now, tatami, if you guys don't know, is that straw woven floor here we have in Japan. She was holding a scythe in her hand. Quickly, he ran to the front door to escape, but somehow it wouldn't open. While he was busy trying to find another door, the old woman came up and grabbed him on the arm. Because of the darkness, he didn't realize it before, but now they were close and he could see she didn't look like a living person. Her skin was rotting. Listen, the old woman said. Under this house lie 13 bodies. Give them peace. If not, I will kill you. He lost consciousness after hearing these words. He didn't know how much time had elapsed. When he woke up, he thought he had just dreamed the whole thing and was about to go. Then he saw a stain in the middle of the tatami room. It was exactly where the old woman had been standing. He removed the tatami where the stain had soaked into the floor and found human skeletons neatly arranged underneath. A closer look revealed that there were 14 bodies there. 14. Hmm. One must have belonged to the old woman. The terrified traveler rushed outside. Having told some villagers of what had happened, he brought them back to the empty house. They saw the skeletons. There were exactly 13 bodies now. Strangely, the old woman's body was not there anymore. What happened after that was that they pulled down the house and built a shrine instead. Inside, where the stained tatami mat had been, people could go to offer prayers for the dead. Today, some kind of stone monument, or Jizo, Jizo is a monument for the deity of the Shinto religion who uh, blesses children and travelers to give them safe journey, stands in the place of the shrine. The travelers and the villagers who discovered the dead bodies died successively soon after the incident. The PE teacher who told me this story said he was from the same village. I can't remember the exact name of the village as it was such a long time ago when I heard this story. I'm sorry. Pretty interesting little old tale here. So it deals with uh, kind of a modern and historical mix of ghost stories, which makes it quite interesting. One of the aspects that I really love about Japanese horror and the stories of the paranormal here is that they always seem to mix and kind of intertwine with old spiritual beliefs and those mixing with modern technology. One of the most famous aspects of this is the tale of the camera obscura, which is said to be a camera that not only can take pictures of ghosts, but also capture human souls as well. What I want to go ahead and take a look at is some video that says it can capture uh, some of these spirits and mixtures of souls and ghosts and different theories that Japanese people and those who are deep into the paranormal and even people like monks and spiritual advisors here think that they have to do with the spirit world. Let's take a look. Here's a famous one here. You may have already seen it. It's listed sometimes incorrectly as Japanese shapeshifter. People who are into the more 
conspiracy theory of lizard people want to go with the shapeshifter theory that this is a lizard person. But if you ask people here in Japan about this that are spiritual advisors or people into the ghosts or paranormal, they say this is actually a ghost appearing over the other person's face, as you can see here. Take a look. You see these eyes appearing over her? According to people who are into the spiritual and paranormal here in Japan in books that are written about it, for example, Kawaii no Hanashi, that actually is supposed to be a ghost showing up that is going to soon claim that soul. And apparently that girl died soon after that, that video. And also that people who are missing limbs in pictures are somehow parts of their body don't show up correctly even though they do exist in real life. That's supposed to show that a ghost is either over top of that image or a soul collector is over top of that image. It's kind of a creepy aspect of those messed up videos. Let's take a look at some more. Here's another video posted by our friends at Nichan and supposedly a small figure shows up into this video and I think you can take a look right there it just went past the small figure. And let's see, we can see it again. It's in your lower left hand corner if we look correctly again. Can you see it down there? Pretty creepy little video. Let's watch one more time. I'll show you here. If you take a look, I'll point to it with my cursor so you guys can see it. Right there. You just see it? It was really quick. Supposedly this was posted on Nichon uh, by an unknown user who was later taken off of the site and this video was blocked but someone had luckily recorded it and now this is a kind of a famous little tiny video that's talked about by paranormal groups here in Japan. Creepy little vid. So here's another famous little one. Um, you guys can take a look with me, I'll watch it with you. Let's start it up. If you can see what they're doing here is showing a home video that's on a train here and supposedly in the background a suicide on the railroad shows up. As far as a ghost, it's not an actual person committing suicide, so don't worry. Here we go. They'll slow it down this time, and you can take a look. Let's see. Where are they going to show it? Right behind her here. Right there. If you take a look, you can just see the hair of the woman and kind of a white image. And this tends to be the typical Japanese ghost, wearing all white and long, dark hair. So if you guys ever have any questions about what does the typical Japanese ghost look like, there you go. Perfect example caught in that video. Collections of creepy videos I find on the internet are always another thing I like to show. And this one's another really creepy one with just a short story behind it, which always makes these really mysterious and weird. This one talks about um, a news crew that went to go film something at a site. This is ages ago, back in 1980. It seems like ages now. And this is before you could do CGI to stuff and mess with video a whole bunch. And what it actually shows is the woman going to a spot where there's a famous bridge in a town. And they're scoping out the site for a news report later. And supposedly, although she seems pretty ganky and okay with everything at the time, later it said she went back to commit suicide on this bridge and that what you're actually seeing later at the end of this is the bridge continuously being pushed through the picture over and over again and at the end the image of the woman's face who committed suicide which nobody added to this video but was found later after they watched it again. Um, supposedly this was seen in the editing room by the people who were working at this news channel is there any truth to any of this? Hey, I can't confirm any of it, but that's the story behind this video. Take a look, there's no jump scares or anything crazy like that. It's a little bit creepy. The story behind it is what really pushes up the creepy level on this one. Take a look if you dare. <laughs> ビデオ
なんでこんなところに置いてるんだろうなって。So here's another one, a video in which supposedly it's been possessed by a spiritual presence. There is no story behind this video at all. It's just posted on Nichan and other different spiritual websites that just say plain creepy. It says uh, bukimi or osoroshi and both of those mean like creepy or scary. And supposedly this is a videotape that was retrieved and edited by a news group and they found all sorts of weird shit all over it. Take a look for yourself. I don't really have much of an explanation other than it does have an example of the missing limbs or missing head type aspects of spiritual video possession. Watch at your own risk. It's not any kind of jump scare but it has some seriously creepy imagery on it. Here we go. finish this off with kind of a famous one. You guys might already know it, username 666 on YouTube. Supposedly the story behind this one, a person creates username 666 on YouTube. That channel never shows up and won't load properly until you try again and again and again. When it finally does load, what you find there is a super creepy page with super creepy videos. If you continuously try to use those videos, watch those videos, or play with the page, your computer somehow downloads a virus which will eventually destroy almost everything on your computer and just rip it from the inside out. Apparently it was a really strong virus connected to the videos on this site due to a curse. Is any of it real? Is any of it true? I don't think we'll ever really know about any of that. But supposedly the creator of this was from Japan and if you start to look at the video and see it a little bit closer you will notice that there is katakana, kanji, and hiragana in this video. This is because the creator of this was from Japan. Take a look, see what you think. We'll end it with that and you guys can see just how creepy stuff on the internet can be.
Okay guys, so as I'm filming this Osoroshi Saturday episode, something really creepy happened and I have to capture it on film right now. I'm filming it and I start to hear this really weird noise coming from the other room behind me here. You can see back there another room. Listen, listen, you hear it? Hold on. There it is. Let's go ahead and go a little bit closer because there is a source to this noise. I found out what it was. But it's, it's just really creepy. Maybe you haven't heard it yet. I'll take you closer to it so you can see what it is. This really freaked me out because it's not a normal noise that I hear in my house. And uh, it's something that really only could happen during summer. So here it is. If you take a look. Let's see, I'll turn the light on so you guys can see. First I thought this was a cockroach. But it's not a cockroach at all. It's a semi. Listen to the sound this thing makes. It's on the last bit of its life. This is the way semis are. They hibernate for three years underground and come out for about, what, like three days to go ahead and respawn all new breeds of themselves. If this guy could just make a little bit of sound for us, you could see what creepiness I had to deal with. So, while I'm on... Oh, fuck. <laughs> now, can you see why I was so scared about what had happened while I was filming this? That thing's out there making that sound like like that, and it totally freaked me out. I didn't know what was doing it. Well, that's it for tonight, guys. Are any of the stories that I showed you tonight true or false, real or fake, made up or completely fabricated or totally real? You know, I have no proof really to push the point one way or the other. There of course will always be those who say there's no such thing as anything spiritual and then there'll be those to support the other side. I myself stay firmly in the middle, apathetic, on the fence. If you like what you saw tonight, uh, there's a lot more to come as I make more and more videos like this. I will say each time I do do this, I always run into something a little bit creepy for myself. For example, tonight when I did that username 666, one I don't really have a lot of faith in that it's really true, but is beautifully fabricated. When I downloaded it to my computer, I clicked on it and dragged it in one time, and somehow it downloaded it six times as kind of a weird sort of, I don't know if it's a memory card type situation or a computer type situation. My computer's brand new. I will say the memory card in the camera that I use is pretty old, so that could be a problem. 
I don't really know, but that's the creepy thing that happened to me tonight when I was messing with all this different tech stuff and spiritual stuff. Until next time, I'm Unrested, and this is Osoroshi Seven.